Before you enjoy this video, let me first talk about our sponsor for this video and the entire Medal of Honor series. Our sponsor is Kimages, a veteran-owned photoshopping and custom gift-making business. I actually served with the owner in the 10th Mountain Division, and I can say that the quality of their products is by far some of the best I've seen. In fact, the shirt that I'm wearing in the video was made by Kimages. I'll put more information on how to contact Kimages in, my, in the description, and you can find them on Facebook using the name Kimages that you can find in the description or on this picture here. Thank you and enjoy the video. It's, we're okay at the moment. I'll go ahead and plug it in because I don't want to lose it. Yes, but smile really quick. No. Right, so, where we are now is at William Kenzo Nakamura. Now, of all the veterans in here who all deserve respect and honor, this one happens to hit a little closer to home for me than others. Uh, I, I won't get into details why, but how he came about to service is probably the incredible part of the story. He was a Japanese American. After Pearl Harbor, fear, paranoia, and a lot of things seized the nation hard. And by March, only a couple, well, about a week or two ago now, every Japanese American who had a certain amount of descendancy was forcibly interred into internment camps. He came out of Minidoka, which was in Idaho. There were other ones in Colorado. Camp Harmony was in Puyallup, Washington. If you've ever gone to the fairgrounds, you stood on the grounds of Camp Harmony. These gentlemen were given a chance to prove their loyalty. Everyone will tell you that, oh, they enlisted because they wanted to. No, they enlisted because they had to prove that they weren't there for the Empire of Japan. The author of a book called The No-No Boys on a, the questions of civilian loyalty is also buried nearby here, I believe in the section that's further up north. And what that refers to is there are two questions kind of trickily worded that if you answered no and no to them, well, you were listed as someone who could be, was not loyal to the United States and exiled. You could be exiled. And that was a plan if the, if the atomic bombs happened in the mainland of Japan was, we'll just send all the Japanese Americans there and they'll be okay. But what he did was, again, I apologize for not reading these all, was basically again sacrifice his life in Italy so that his comrades could live and perform their actions. Now I want to point out something very carefully is that his headstone is there, his marker is here. So you'll see here, especially in this section, a lot of coins. So the tradition is if you're in this kind of a grave, you walk over to the head of the stone and you put the coin on the rest of the top. But Kenzo was actually born in the United States. He was an American citizen who was, as we now know, uh, illegally interred in the, in the Japanese internment camps. His uh, Medal of Honor actually didn't happen for him until President Bill Clinton, I believe it was 2000. He and several other members of the 442nd, an all Japanese regiment, of which the governor of Hawaii, Colonel, uh, whose name is invading me, but he's a former governor of Hawaii, he got his Medal of Honor during that ceremony as well. I believe there was about 16 in total from the 446. To this day, sorry, the 442nd, to this day, the 442nd remains the most decorated unit in U.S. Army history. These guys were given the worst missions, expected to die doing it, and expected to be proud to die doing it. Yet, the difference was, not only did they succeed, they succeeded beyond expectations. So please take the time, visit Mr. Nakamura, and the next ones will be further down, closer to the Doughboy statue.